My name is Jonathan Porritt. I'm the founder director of an organisation called Forum for the Future um, and chair of the UK Sustainable Development Commission and I'm also an advisor to the converging world and have been involved pretty much from the start. I think in order to understand why the converging world is important, it's necessary to see what's going on in the world today. We've basically run out of steam with the old model of progress. So if you look today at the converging crises around oil prices now going close to $140 a barrel, food prices increasing, food riots all around the world, serious water scarcity in many parts of the world, food, the whole sense of suddenly people waking up to resource constraints as a major driver of what's going to happen in society. Add into all of that the credit crunch, economic recession looming in many parts of the world. And then on top of that, the fact that the world is still desperately divided, inequitable, the division of wealth between rich and poor, it's still grotesque. And essentially we need to put in place a new way of creating wealth, a new way of meeting people's needs and of distributing the proceeds of that wealth more equitably. Now the importance of the converging world is it's trying to address the key aspects of this transition period, transitioning from a fundamentally unsustainable and inequitable world to a world which will be genuinely sustainable and more equitable. And it's trying to go after these three things really and for people who find this sort of really complicated, it is really complicated, just focus on the three basics of what this transition looks like. The first is we have to move away from our dependence on fossil fuels on hydrocarbons, coal, oil and gas. And we have to transition over to a completely different kind of energy economy which is primarily and in due course exclusively provided by renewable energy. This is the biggest transition in the history of humankind. Leaving behind the age of oil and moving through into the age of solar. So that's one fundamental transition. The second fundamental transition which is equally important in some respects, is we have to have a fairer world. The world is not going to be able to look forward to a sustainable future if we go on allowing the divides between rich and poor to get worse every year. So we have to commit to increased equity. We have to commit to a system that is just basically much fairer for people, particularly for the two, two and a half billion people in the world today who have practically uh, nothing to rely on for their future. And thirdly, and most interestingly, this is all about governance systems, as I mentioned. We have to accept that in this transition process, communities are going to do much more for themselves than they have been able to do in the past. There's going to be a resurgence of all sorts of autonomous, community-based initiatives. And as part of that process, individuals, more and more of us as individuals, are going to have to take greater responsibility for what it is that we do in our communities, in our workplaces, in our own homes. You can't get away from this. We can't build a sustainable future unless we emphasize that aspect of personal responsibility. So those are the three things, okay? A move from the oil age to the solar age, a move from a disastrously inequitable world to a more equitable world, and a move towards far higher levels of engagement and autonomy at the community level and personal responsibility at the individual level. The converging world is doing all of those three things. This is what makes it so special and interesting for me. It's obviously right at the heart of this move to generate more and more of the energy that people need from renewable energy. And the wind turbines in Tamil Nadu are absolutely part of that picture. It's right at the heart of the equity challenge because it's basically saying if you in the rich world think you can survive without looking after the needs of people, in the poor world, in regions like Tamil Nadu, you're mad. You are completely mad because no world can be built without looking more to us working with poor people elsewhere in the world. And thirdly, it's going right to the heart of community engagement and personal responsibility. And the bits that will be done in the name of Converging World back here in the UK as well as going on out there in India and eventually, of course, elsewhere around the world, I hope, links communities and people to this very dynamic, exciting, um, agenda about change in the world today.